Another popular technology is micro turbines. Uh, Capstone has a pretty substantial piece of the market here in New York City. And in this case, in this photo here, they're using the waste heat to drive an absorption chiller. Uh, and you can see that, I mean, if, yeah, you can't really see the details too well, but the interesting thing about this turbine is it turns at like about 80,000 RPM, but it's still fairly quiet, and it's on these air bearings, so there's no friction, you know, it's, it's kind of cold. Um, they tend to be less efficient, though, than the reciprocating, so you get more waste heat for a given amount of electricity, and that's going to affect how you select the technology for your particular building. It's not, they're not cookie cutters. It's not like, oh, cogen. We're going to put a cogen in, and it doesn't really matter which technology. It makes a huge difference because sizing the equipment is probably the biggest challenge that you're going to face, which I'll show you in a second. So, as you can see by this uh, very swoopy, exciting, futuristic design, um, <laughs> fuel cells are a really uh, a very exciting technology. This is the unit over at the Octagon on Roosevelt Island. And uh, this thing cost a fortune. Uh, and as you'll see a little later, uh, it, 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 it's done okay, but not as okay as it should have, probably. Um, but there is one operating here in New York City, and you can go and look at it. And it's this big white box. You put gas in, and heat and electricity come out, just, just like Brian said earlier. Now, the cogen unit itself is not the only piece of equipment that you need. Uh, very frequently, you're going to need some additional pieces of equipment. Uh, if you're using the waste heat for domestic hot water, uh, because the consumption of domestic hot water is not a flat line, it usually varies like this, particularly in multifamily, you're going to need some storage tanks. Otherwise, you won't be able to run the cogen all the time. Uh, especially if you have an oversized system, which I'll talk about in a moment, you're going to need a dump radiator, mostly for reciprocating systems. The microturbines tend to have their own kind of built-in dump radiator up the chimney, but uh, the reciprocating systems frequently require a dump radiator. And uh, Morgan alluded earlier to the whole issue of gas pressure, and a lot of the systems do require a gas booster to operate at, at the pressure that, that they're comfortable with. So all of these things add to the cost, the complexity, and the footprint, and so forth. Actually, interestingly enough, this, this particular gas booster has, has not operated for like a few years. They put it in because they thought they needed it, and then turned out they could operate on the normal four inches of water column that Con Ed provides. So that, that's kind of interesting. 